Welcome to Metal Welding Lecture Series by Professor Joyjeet Ghosh. This is the second lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on oxy-fuel welding and oxy-fuel cutting. He will be discussing about gas welding process, basic equations, fuels used in gas cutting, advantages and limitations of gas cutting. He will also discuss the different types of gas flames in gas welding and will also discuss the fundamentals of gas cutting. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends. Welcome to this second lecture of a series of lecture on metal welding. In this lecture we will be discussing about oxyfuel welding and oxyfuel cutting. So in the slides in front of you, you might be seeing a setup uh, or the equipment that is necessary for oxy fuel welding. We essentially require a fuel cylinder, uh, an oxygen cylinder and some pressure regulators are there on top of the cylinder to regulate the pressure through which uh, pressure of the gases. So it comes out through, the, both the gases comes through this hose and reaches a torch uh, and mixes in the torch in required proportion. You can control the amount of oxygen and the fuel gas in this case it's acetylene uh, that is mixed inside the torch and this mixture gas comes out from the tip that is the nozzle and is ignited by means of a spark which causes a flame. So This flame is used to heat and to melt the metal and obtain the metal continuity or of the welding. <clears throat> so we have a welding torch. Welding torch can be of two types equal pressure or medium pressure type and injector type or low pressure type. <clears throat> and we have a special type of welding tip for uh, oxy fuel welding which we will discuss we will discuss in later slide. So here you the the oxygen valve this is the fuel gas valve and you can control the amount of fuel gas and amount of oxygen which is coming out which is mixing somewhere around here and the mixture gas comes out through this tip then we have pressure regulator to regulate the pressure uh, cylinders for the fuel gas and for the oxygen gas we have hose spark lighter goggles and gloves of course are important so oxy fuel welding uh, is slightly dangerous welding um, uh, process and very often you will see the oxy oxy fuel welder gas welder has burn marks on their uh, body so it is extremely dangerous particularly because of the back pressure <clears throat> okay so uh, to define the oxy fuel welding it's a group of welding processes which produces a coalescence by hitting the matrix by uh, the flame obtained from oxy fuel gas with or without application of pressure and with or without addition of filler material. Normally we don't add pressure but filler material if required can be added separately which can be melted by the heat obtained from the flame and can be deposited in between the two metal pieces which you are joining. So the temperature maximum temperature is somewhere around uh, 3200 degrees centigrade um, and the filler material if required has to be provided separately and that filler material is called filler rod or welding rod which is available in the market. So basically those torch, the gas mixture flame is coming out, uh, the filler rod added if required separately. Okay, so um, it can't, it, um, the setup consists of two cylinders, one fuel gas and another oxygen. Uh, both the fuel and oxygen are mixed in the torch in required proportion. Uh, and there is a tip through which this gas mixture comes out and is ignited to form a flame. Uh, words that are normally used are acetylene, natural gas, propane, propylene, hydrogen, methyl uh, acetylene, propadene. In India, uh, we mostly use acetylene because acetylene gives us the highest heat that is around 3200, rest probably around 2900 degree centigrade. Rest of the fuel gases gives around 2900, 2900 degree centigrade. In North America, uh, MAP is um, used in abundance, whereas in India, we mostly use acetylene. <coughs> So the combustion takes place as like this acetylene C2H2 plus O2 gives you carbon monoxide plus hydrogen this is the first stage reaction this occurs at the tip of the torch and the secondary reaction reaction where 
this carbon monoxide reacts with atmospheric oxygen to form carbon dioxide and the hydrogen that is, mm, forms uh, the stream into H2O. This is the secondary reaction. So this two stage reaction produces a flame which has two zones. The inner zone having the maximum temperature and the outer cone. So the maximum temperature occurs near the inner zone. So the outer envelope, uh, the outer cone is basically is, uh, uh, is forced onto the workpiece to preheat the metal and then the inner cone is brought in contact with the metal and the heat from the inner cone is sufficient to melt the metal and a metal continuity is obtained. <clears throat> so here one advantage is that, uh, see here uh, when we heat metal, the metal has a tendency to react with atmospheric oxygen. Now the advantage of the secondary reaction is that the carbon monoxide that is produced in the first reaction, a uh, first stage reaction uh, reacts with the atmospheric oxygen or rather you can say it's consuming, consumes the atmospheric oxygen uh, and deprives the environment of oxygen uh, and prevents uh, the heated metal from reacting with atmospheric oxygen to produce uh, metal oxides. So that is the advantage of the secondary reaction. So what is the application? See gas welding is not that popular nowadays but it is mainly used as a uh, as a repair setup on uh, certain advantage it has is that it can be used as a heating source for other applications like we can uh, even heat the mold or we can heat uh, we can use the heat for brazing operations uh, we can we can use the same setup for cutting operations so mainly it is basically used for a standby uh, um, setup <clears throat> although it can be used for welding of uh, cast iron low carbon steel alloy steel lead zinc aluminium nowadays we don't uh, use this even for uh, thinner materials However, it has a one beautiful advantage is that uh, it is equipment is fairly low cost and it can be taken anywhere even if there is no electricity you can use this uh, uh, equipment to carry out welding processes that is a distinct advantage but the process is very dangerous and requires skilled operator <coughs> and uh, uh, the source of heat can in, in when we are carrying out this welding outside in the air burst can deflect the flame and it will be very difficult to carry out the welding processes and again the heat temp generator is not enough uh, to melt uh, thick size work pieces so these are the limitations of gas welding so with this this is a chart uh, showing the flame temperature for different well gases and the heat content okay, then we have a neutral flame neutral flame when you are using equal volume of uh, oxygen acetylene for neutral volume uh, neutral flame and uh, the maximum temperature obtained is in a neutral flame that is around 3200 degrees centigrade and here we have uh, two distinct zones and the temperature is around of this flame is around 1250 degrees centigrade very less but this zone is basically used for preheating the metal and this is used for melting the metal so here it is around <coughs> very high uh, this inner cone is around 3300 degrees centigrade or 3200 degrees centigrade this is a sub brilliant inner core and an outer envelope which is blue is in color so this is neutral flame and we have oxidizing flame where the amount of oxygen is more than the uh, amount of acetylene and you have again two zones one small inner cone which is purple in color and an outer envelope <clears throat> the temperature around here is slightly more around 3500 degree centigrade but it is not suitable for welding steel because oxygen will react with steel and form oxides so therefore we do not use oxidizing flame for welding steel rather it is used for welding copper cop copper alloys zinc and zinc alloys and then we have if the acetylene percentage is more then it is called carburizing flame the temperature of course is less here around 3000 degree centigrade uh, and the flame is called carburizing flame which is suitable mainly for heating operations uh, it has three zones uh, unlike the other two it has separately defined inner cone and intermediate inner intermediate cone which is whitest in color and a bluish outer cone so uh, if you are using acetate in, in practicals uh, one it is a very uh, beautiful to watch the different flames you can change the 
percentage of the mixture and you can you can uh, watch the uh, difference in the flame so that is beautiful to watch uh, if you get a chance you all of you should try this you can see here the flames are distinctly different and that makes it uh, very very interesting of course the applications are also different for different flames and then we have gas cutting this is very very interesting gas cutting oxyfuel cutting <coughs> or gas cutting uh, it's a popular method of thermal cutting uh, where uh, <coughs> there is a torch tip has a provision for plating the pet plate as well as providing an oxygen jet so the jet the torch uh, the setup is same as that of an uh, oxyfuel welding process only thing is the difference is the torch the torch has a provision for preheating the plate or the metal piece which you are cutting and there is also a provision for a jet of oxygen to come out so this is also called oxy lens cutting particularly in steel industries a very um, um, important process used in steel industry for cutting the steel strips uh, which is already in heated condition so once it is in heated condition no additional uh, heat is required heating is required so at the temperature a uh, oxygen jet is made to pass and which will be cutting the steel strips so how it is done what is the concept fundamental of it we'll be discussing here uh, one thing you should know for oxyfuel cutting is there is a temperature called kindling temperature kindling temperature is the temperature at which rapid oxidation or combustion can of the particular material can begin like kindling temperature for steel uh, in pure oxygen is around uh, 870 degree centigrade to around 900 degree centigrade so, so if steel is in in that uh, temperature range and if we pass oxygen we can cut the steel easily how that will be discussing here by this reaction so what happens when the jet of oxygen is hit is made to uh, strike a already heated uh, steel <coughs> so this oxygen reacts with the steel uh, that is the iron present in the steel and forms ferrosophorous oxide this ferrosophorous oxide are extremely brittle and can be blown away by the force of the oxygen jet and you can carry out a cut so it happens like this basically there is a uh, the torch has a tip which has holes in the periphery and in center there is a hole so these holes has a mixture of oxygen and uh, acetylene uh, flame which hits uh, this uh, metal uh, and once it is hit uh, if you press the lever the oxygen jet passes so when the oxygen jet passes the heated metal uh, the ferrosophorous oxides are formed which is extremely brittle and will be blown away by this jet which is under significant pressure and you move the torch and the cutting will progress however there is a drag because these uh, and there is a loss of energy and because of the loss of energy the, uh, the jet moves in this direction and uh, you can see this type of marks <clears throat> will be there so it was very important to achieve the correct uh, velocity uh, and the correct pressure which is very important to obtain to carry out a good cutting anyway uh, how much you try uh, <coughs> uh, the cutting surface is uh, has a very poor surface finish Nowadays we have many other cutting options. Earlier it was a very uh, <clears throat> popularly used method. Nowadays we have uh, uh, plasma arc cutting, we have wire EDM, we have laser beam cutting, we have water jet cutting. So you have different cutting processes are available nowadays. So therefore the dependence of um, industrial dependence of this type of process is very much less nowadays because this does not give a very good surface finish. So you can see the torch tip this is this is the torch tip for welding where the mixture comes out to the center and whereas in cutting tip uh, the torch has as you can see this is a different torch as a this is the periphery you have, the mixture comes out to the periphery and oxygen get through the center okay so there is a cutting drag as i uh, discussed earlier You see speed is too low if the speed is too fast what will happen if the nozzle is too high the pressure is too high so this is very important and the, it depends on the skill of the operator so applications from any type of cutting works uh, you can carry out <coughs> aluminium and copper are difficult to cut it is very 
it can be used for cutting of steels of various types. So the different types of frames. So next lecture we will be discussing about arc welding. Thank you for watching this video.